Welcome to the Nevis Newscast for Friday, September 6th, 2019. I'm Donis Wilkinson Keynes. A press conference was hosted today, Friday, September 6th, by the Health Promotion Unit to announce a series of activities the unit will host in celebration of Caribbean Wellness Day. Program coordinator Nadine Carty Keynes, who moderated this morning's press conference, noted that Caribbean Wellness Day is geared towards increasing awareness and promoting activities to address the epidemic of non communicable diseases. Caribbean Wellness Day and Wellness Week 2019 focuses on improving the quality of life of the aging population. Caribbean Wellness Day is observed on Saturday, 14 September 2019. Overall, the Caribbean Wellness Day theme remains Love That Body. However, each year the slogan changes and the focus for this year, as I've stated, is Healthy Aging Starts Now. Senior Health Educator Shevany Nisbet announced the activities. On Friday, September 13th, we have, some, we have a day called Sneaker Day. On Sneaker Day, everyone is encouraged to wear their sneakers to work or wherever they're headed on that day. Saturday, September 14th is Caribbean Wellness Day. On this day, we will be having our wellness walk, our annual wellness walk. The walk starts at 6 a.m. at the bottom of Cotton Brown Road, right at the entrance of Yaxman Road. It goes along the island main road heading into Charlestown and ends at the Villa Ground, where we will have a breakfast party. On Tuesday, September 17th, is the day of our mini health fair to be held at the Memorial Square in Charleston, beginning at 8 a.m. and ending at 1 p.m. Nisbet noted that the activities are geared towards promoting healthy eating, physical activity, and knowing your blood sugar and blood pressure numbers, as well as your body mass index. On Friday, September 20th, we will be hosting Feet in the Street. On this day, we are planning to block off the main streets of Charleston from the exit of the Salmon Hawkins Drive, that's close to the old cinema or family store, to the villa grounds from 6 a.m. to 5 p.m. Consequently, everyone who has to work or conduct business in town on that day will be walking to their destination as opposed to driving to the nearest parking spot and walking just a few steps into that respective building. We will end this event by having an exciting session of soca size from 4.15 to 4.45 p.m. in the street, in the main street between First Caribbean Bank and, po and the post office. We are encouraging everyone to take part in this as it will be good fun. It will be a good fun workout. Also at the head table were Shelissa Martin Clark, Acting Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Health, and Dr. Judy Nisbet, Medical Officer of Health, who endorsed the activities for Caribbean Wellness Day and Caribbean Wellness Week. Inspector Alonso Carty represented the Royal St. Christopher and the Nevis Police Force, who will partner with the Health Promotion Unit to facilitate feet in the street on September 20th. The Department of Social Services, in partnership with the newly established Nevis Counseling Unit, hosted a one-week family counselors training session from Monday 2nd to Friday 6th September. Thirteen persons were trained using the Family Matters model of the Community, Family and Youth Resilience Program, a prevention and intervention strategy formulated by USAID. The Family Matters model was created by the Los Angeles Mayor's Office Gang Reduction and Youth Development Program, a specialized approach to reduce risky behaviors among youth aged 10 to 17 years. Facilitating the training session, which ended today, was Don Henry, Secondary Prevention Specialist. Iversia Brown and Stevie Jones of the Nevis Counseling Unit were participants. During the latter part of 2019, the program is going to be rolled out to a fuller extent in Nevis than it was before. And this program will engage the Family Matters model, which will uh, engage family counselors in Nevis um, who will be going out to the homes of youth who were assessed back in 2017 or youth who were referred to the program and assessed in order to assist families 
um, in order to prevent youth who may be having some problem problematic behaviors or youth who may be engaging in some form of antisocial behavior. Back in the day, we used to say that it takes a community to raise a child, and the model insists that every member of the family should be involved in order to help young people or youth at risk to change their behavior. You know, Sinkitz and Nevis were identified as uh, one of the countries in the Caribbean who had a high crime rate and several youth who have been engaging in gangs and deviant behavior. And so the USAID is trying to roll out this program in our country in order to put a prick in the problem that we are having with the issue of crime within our federation. This is an evidence-based program that has shown great results in other Caribbean communities such as those in St. Lucia and Guyana. Our family counselors will be going into the communities to assist families in terms of achieving their goals. Now, I encourage families to be open to these family counselors as a part of our profession, confidentiality is key. And I encourage families to open your doors to these family councils and together we will work to ensure that the strengths of these families be improved and amplified and together we will achieve the goal of protecting our youth, enhancing the strengths of our family and building a stronger, better community. The Community Family and Youth Resilience Program is designed to assist agencies and organizations that work with youth. Still to come. 2018, 1.5 million. And 2019, we have allocated some $1.8 million thus far. We will give you the details after this break. At a loss as to what's going on in Nevis, tune into NNC on MTV. Don't worry if you don't have cable either. NNC will bring the news to you wherever you are. Facebook and Facebook Live. YouTube and YouTube Live. NevisTVOnline.com. Roku app, NTV mobile app, Smart TV, Apple TV, and any other IPTV platforms. When me ain't see and you ain't see NNC. Welcome back. The Ministry of Education will continue to work with the islands of schools to improve the facilities. Junior Minister of Education, the Honorable Troy Leibert, gave that assurance on Tuesday, September 3rd, when he visited the Gingerland Secondary School, where work was done during the summer vacation. The work was focused on the first form block, which also houses the integrated science lab. Work on all of the classrooms was completed and the students, I'm happy to say, are in class and um, in very, very good environs and um, getting on with the business of school. Minister Leibert also explained that work continues on the school's science labs. The integrated science lab is not 100% complete as there is a lot of work that is planned for that lab. We have upgraded all of the electricals and data on the entire block and in the lab we have put in new gas pipes and you know the things that make a lab a lab. The um, tables and the cupboardry for the lab are being made off-site and they should be in within the next week or two but school continues in the meantime while we get to that. We did quite a bit of work on the fifth form block also where we had some, some leaking. When, when rain falls, we would have problems with water. That created some problems in the um, physics lab and chemistry lab. We have rectified the windows, which we believe to be the problem, and work will be done on the chemistry lab and the physics lab to, do, to repair the damage done by the water sometime throughout the term or at the end of the term during the Christmas vacation. Refurbishment work is also being done on the school's computer lab. We had one half of the computer lab um, completed already and the other half should be done by the end of this week. So come Monday, um, the, lab, the computer lab sh should be in 
good condition and our students should be able to start um, using the upgraded and refurbished um, labs. I'm very pleased with the progress that we've had here at the Gingerland Secondary School. We had a contractor, Mr. Rohan Elliott from Rollins, a Gingerland man from right around here. He did most of the work over the um, summer. The work on the interiors to the computer lab was being done by Superior Interiors and they are also doing a, an exceptional job. So we are very pleased by the work that we see here and we will give our commitment from the Ministry to continue to work with the schools to um, get the facilities up to where they need to be. Minister Leibold was accompanied by Kevin Barrett, Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Education, Lynette Williams, Principal of the Gingerland Secondary School, and Alex Percival, Supervisor of the Maintenance Team in the Ministry of Education. In related news, in his opening remarks at the September 5th Premier's Press Conference, the Honorable Mark Brandley, the Senior Minister of Education, noted that work was also done during the summer to improve the conditions at a number of the island's schools. Let me point out that we did work at Violet Jeffers Primary, we did work at St. Thomas's Primary, we did work at the Ines France Preschool, we did some minimal work at the Charleston Primary School. We did massive work at the Gingerland Secondary School. All of this was done over the summer. And most of that work was done on time and the students have had no disruption. Each summer, each break time, we will continue to improve the plant. Premier Brantley explained that this is all in an effort to ensure that the island's students and teachers have the best possible environment within which to work. We have a mandate to have child-friendly schools. That is the mandate. We must have schools where the infrastructure is friendly, it's safe, it's welcoming. And I'm very proud of the record of this government in its effort to improve the plant, the physical plant, and to live up to the expectation that we have that our schools will be child-friendly. And as a consequence, we have been spending, we have been investing, and we have been seeking to do the best that we can. According to Premier Brantley, so far for 2019, some $1.8 million has been allocated to the improvement of schools in Nevis. That's it for this edition of the Nevis Newscast. On behalf of all of us here at the Department of Information, thank you for viewing.